For some reason, the hack and slash genre never broke through to become a mainstream one. Despite games like Devil May Cry and Heavenly Sword having great combat systems that are fun to play, they could never quite convert the casuals to become more dedicated fans. And that's probably because of two factors. This party's getting crazy. Let's rock. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. First, the genre tends to focus on fast-paced action to the detriment of stories, and that can get tiresome for players who need those narrative incentives to keep playing. Second, due to their niche reputation and low number of expected sales, the production values are usually quite low, resulting in dated assets and graphics which can turn off some of the more superficial gamers. God of War is arguably the series that shifted that perception though, blending its mythically inspired story and gameplay to defy the odds and become one of Sony's flagship IPs. <laughs> 2018's God of War even managed to buck these trends by being a masterpiece of storytelling with beautiful visuals and graphics that might turn even the most averse fans onto the genre. However, in our minds, the core focus of a hack and slash needs to be the combat. The mechanics, flow, and complexity need to be the defining feature of the game, and for that reason, Bayonetta 2 is the undisputed champ. Now, now, is that any way to speak to an old friend? Top-tier combat systems need to tread the line between accessibility and depth, and that balance is at the root of the game's greatness. Bayonetta's precise and fluid moveset is fundamentally quite simple. Each of her four limbs can attack with guns, kicks, punches, and melee weapons, and can chain together with any other attack to combo in increasingly complex ways. This can be as simple as kicking five times in a row, or staggering your attacks to launch and smash your enemies across the arena. Each individual attack and the chains that they result in can be pushed even further by equipping different weapons that each have their own damage and attack speed values. If you want to master the Love is Blue set, nothing is stopping you, but maybe you'll find your playstyle is better suited to Scarborough Fair. The choice is completely yours. More importantly though, these gear sets can be swapped on the fly, encouraging players to switch back and forth to experiment without interrupting the flow of combat. This accessibility and variety is key, because it gives players freedom to explore the controls and mechanics at their own pace while enjoying the superb visual splendor that is Bayonetta kicking ass. It's not all about the damage though, and that's where Witch Time and that depth we talked about comes in. You see, unlike other hack and slashes where offense is the best way forward, Bayonetta 2 encourages a more thoughtful approach. If you successfully time the dodge of an enemy attack, time slows down around you, enabling you to punish your foes at lightning speeds. This means that unlike Kratos' roll, which feels weak and counterintuitive to the character, Bayonetta's dodges are meant to encourage players to study their enemies carefully, learn their patterns, and respond to them accordingly. Combat never feels like mindless button mashing, and always forces you to keep your eyes peeled for that particularly damaging incoming attack. You probably don't need us to tell you how awesome it feels to finally figure out some of the many imposing bosses, and crush them with your intimate knowledge of their moveset after a couple of cracks at it. Mastering this mechanic is also crucial because it fills up the magic meter which is required to unleash your stronger moves. Dodge away until it's maxed out and rain hell on your enemies with climax attacks, but get hit once and you lose it all. It's harsh, but by penalizing players for taking damage, Platinum subtly encourages them to make use of and master the dodge skills, and these skills then translate to higher difficulties where players have less and less time to react. It can be frustrating, but with each step up the ladder you'll become more proficient and well equipped to deal with the challenges you'll face. It's thanks to this that the game never really feels cheap. Sure, certain bosses will take a few tries to master, but the mistakes that lead to death are always due to flaws in your own play that can be corrected with practice and the refinement of your skills. That push for perfection culminates in the built-in score system. Each combat awards you a trophy based on the time it took until completion, the length of your longest combo, and the amount of damage taken. 
ace all three, and you get the shiny pure platinum trophy. But it's incredibly unforgiving and requires the use of advanced techniques like dodge offsets, which allows you to continue your combo after dodging an enemy attack. They might not be necessary to beat the story, but it's once you start trying to make perfect runs that they basically become mandatory. Darkness is the absence of light. And round out this core gameplay loop of self-improvement. When you put these factors together, you have a game that even without dedicated training or in-depth tutorial modes encourages the most casual players to discover its deeper secrets and complexities, all while managing to keep the hardcore fans challenged and engaged. Bayonetta 2 is spectacular because it implements well-thought-out mechanics and centers the entirety of the game around them. Is the story going to win an award? Never in a million years. Does it have the massive AAA budget of games like the newest God of War? Not really. Still, the combat system isn't just one of the best examples in the genre, it's one of the best examples ever. It's so good that Platinum has continued to tweak and implement it in other games like Transformers Devastation and Nier Automata. And with this foundation to build on, we can't wait to see what they do with the third installment of the series. See you around, Bayonetta. Goodbye, little one. Check out these other great clips from Mojo Place, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.